All right. So, you know, we are part of the Buy Jamaica campaign and we want all our young youths to be, you know, employed and have good jobs and earning money. And Make I, Jamaica I, I better. And we want the society to try to be knowledgeable about this because a lot of people don't understand the, the importance of buying local. Yes. Right? So sometimes local costs a little bit more. But when you, when you buy a pound of tomatoes from a Jamaican farmer, what you in fact doing is supporting the Jamaican economy. That's right. When you buy a, a, a pound of tomato paste, it's your import. Yes. Yes, so the importer may be making some money and it employs a few workers, but it doesn't have the same effect on the, the local economy. It's not. If you were to buy from that farmer. Good afternoon. One of the things is what we are here now with Mr. Dr. Deslanders. What, what is this facility? This is our spring garden farm. It's our main farm in here. Main farm in here. It's you our mean main like farm. farming of crops and For crops, yes. Okay. It's primarily a crop farm. Crop farm. Yes. So you have students here learning from this facility or no, it's just we, commercial? We, we, we bust them in sometimes. It's primarily commercial, but we bust them in sometimes. Okay, so this the is lecturers a, have access to the facility if they so desire. So this is a money making facility yes, for kids. Yes, this is okay. this is what this And this is, looks uh, like a whole banana factory or yes, something. Yes, we're trying to we're gonna retrofit it to do Aki and, and process Aki's and um, Oh yes. So you're going to Aki's and Kalalo. Aki and Kalalo, okay. Yes. And you have a nice facility, a nice yes, shedding we're, we're storage area, right. water, light. So we're, we're planting about 300 acres of fruit trees, 400 acres of fruit trees. Right in this area. So, so the pressing, and we also do pineapples here, can we start? So we, okay. we, have a, we also have some pineapple equipment already. Okay, so let's take a look at the, um, some of it. As you look at you can see the banana, banana. fields. And um, we're going to convert here from bananas to plant, to pineapple. The pineapples also? Yes. Why, is it that pineapple is more profitable? It is more profitable and we need to expand. Oh, because of why? Why do you think we need to expand the... the because the, the demand for pineapples is still pretty pretty strong. Um, we're getting, we've been selling pineapples for hundred dollars a pound for the, for the last 18 months. One hundred dollars a pound yeah. for 18 months? For 18 months. And the puree, I think that's also another big part of pineapple too. Yes, three million dollars worth of US imports. Three million dollars. Yes, we yeah. import three million US dollars worth of puree. Wow. So that's another that's the next level of the market that we're trying to get at. Right. And so you see expansion by true juice and and and, and um, JP. Yes. But the market is still pretty deep. Mm -hmm. There's also the possibility of exporting pineapples to Europe. Right. And to the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So that is that is big. So tell me something. How how, how long does the pineapple from plant to reap? It depends, it depends on where you carry it, depends on if your, your, your feeding program, it can run, it can be 12 months, it can be 18 months. I would say typically if you, if you, if you do it properly, I would say from, from planting the suckers, which we acquire from Costa Rica, to harvesting, we take a year. One year? Yes. So all our, all our plants come from Costa Rica? Right planting, now, yes. yes. Planting material? Yes. But, but okay. cases now, we're doing some work on the... Part of what we the the, 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 the work at the tissue culture lab that we have built right. is to start to produce our own suckers okay. from tissue culture plant. From tissue culture. Um wow look at this pineapple field over here. We can just look across there. Wow. The, the pineapple that doesn't have the prickle on it. Yes, that is correct. Okay. It was originally brought in by the Ministry of Agriculture and given to JP and a few other farmers. Okay. But now it I you'll you'll find it, it, it will begin to dominate the space. Oh, but it still does have, oh, it has a little bit it of It has a little bit of prickle. But not a lot. Right, but sometimes it's not, sometimes it's purity of the plant material, you know. Right. Yeah, so you, you do get that sometimes. What about regrowth? Ah, uh, it produces suckers, not as much as it, the traditional varieties. Uh-huh. But it does, it does, so we have a suckers from it from time to time. Why would you have gone to this versus the other type of... um Productivity. Oh, it's more productive. I can, I can put up to 25 thousand plants on an acre. Oh, and Plant with the regular pineapple you can't? 8,000 or more, 8,000. So what's the difference? You can plant these closer? Closer, more compact. Okay, and it still flourish? Yes. Requires a lot of water? 
it does require not a lot of water it does require water it, it, you need to feed it okay it feeds primarily through the leaves to the, the the um yeah. then, so, you, so you, it's it's actually even though we do drip we're not actually contemplating now moving from drip to an, a, a sprinkler kind of a oven okay sprinkler system so so it stores the waters in the leaf basically yes okay. so it feeds better from the leaves so everyone this is going to be a processing facility we, 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 last year we have we that 20 we spent we we're in about 24 million from sales in it. 24 million yes and what was your input cost on, on a field like this um an acre because of how we because we imported the planting material ourselves an acre will cost you a million dollars to establish one million dollar to establish and then in but terms if you, but, if, but if you do if you go with the tradition if you buy the, the planting material from a third party it could run in 2.2 million 2.4 million okay and then what it costs to maintain it for that one year before it be you have an idea what the cost uh, is like not not half and but it's 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 reasonable i mean it's not it's not overly um expensive the one million i talk about now also includes the maintenance cost for the year oh so you're the, talking the, the biggest cost is the plant material so you're you're actually telling me say so you make about 20 million dollars per year after this of our acre no no we make about three three million a year roughly three million dollars per yeah. acre Okay. Net, net, net revenue. Net revenue. Because, the, the, for example, I mean, at 20, we put, we put 20,000 plants per acre. Mm -hmm. We generate about 80,000, 78,000 pounds of fruit. We sell for $100. You can do the maths. Right. So we run about $7 from per plant okay. per acre. That's nice. Very nice. Yeah. All right. So this facility now is one of the facilities here that they are going to be doing the puree. Yes, for pineapples. For pineapples, you're going to be doing canning aki. For akis. So it will be a canning factory also. And Kalalo. And Kalalo. Mm -hmm. And I guess you might open to the public to can and, and do things for well, other places. Uh, everything that we do now, we, 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 we have that model in mind. That's part right. of our outreach efforts. So one of the things is that... Um, because I don't think we'll be able to produce enough to utilize the facility. To utilize the facility. So one of the things with Case, Case is going on a commercial basis so that they can earn money and show the students you know what a commercial operation is like and show them how all of this works and also one of the next thing is usually from facilities like this they are going to be waste and this waste material no from idea. these plants where the they are goats. so important we're going to use them to feed the goats absolutely the goats are going to get all the waste from these absolutely. Absolutely. which which will also be like what you call it now the cream and the crop are right, the absolutely. Yeah, you understand right this will because produce right, right now we do fresh Yes. But when we start to process the pineapples, then you know that all of that You're going to make more money out of it yeah. because you'll be able to use all of this back. And also, the goats actually eat some of this material. Yes. Though. And we can further process some of these material, maybe grind it up or do different things and make feed out of all of because these things. Because sometimes we cut it down. When right. We, after we have harvested, we cut back to allow the suckers to spring up. Spring up back, right. So all of that material is just sitting there going to waste. Right. So it's something we need to look at in terms of cutting it up and feeding the feed now go to it right because this can be trough cut yes. we can trough cut up this and feed it to our animals goats love pineapple skin they love pineapple and you know the pineapple juice from all of this has a lot of energy in it and plus the leaves probably have fiber and so forth so what we're bringing here to you is to show you that everything that we are doing is there's a holistic approach Absolutely. that you can use the fruit we eat it and all the waste from this go to our small ruminant sector. Very, very important. That is why the goat and sheep sector is so important. Doc? Absolutely. How much meat we import goat and, 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 and sheep a year? 2.5 million kgs. 2.5 million kgs of mutton and goat is imported. 90% right. mutton. 90 percent of it Mut is roughly. mutton. Right. Mutton is sheep. 90% right. of it is, is, is mutton. And it's a substitute for goat meat. And it is a know. substitute for goat meat because in it's Jamaica. Cheap. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. And yeah. what is that US spend? For 40 million US dollars. We are Flat spending 14 million US dollars. 14 million US dollars we're spending to pay for this goat and sheep meat that we are importing into the country in fact i think Trevor, this is a low-hanging fruit I, I really think and i think um what i see now is an energy within the within the ministry to try to emphasize and push goat production it's a low-hanging fruit this is it something is. That we can we can we can easily fix we can fix this yes jamaica know to raise goats i mean they've been raising goats for centuries for, yes. for, for a long time you know we just have to create a you know create the right environment to protect people from predators and and 
and also have proper facilities for for um for processing you know but i think and the training yes. we have to continue to and, train and to people in right, modern technology yes the right distribution model yes. the right logistic models to move the goat meat from from the from the farmer to the to the, to the plate and the right designs of the right. housing facilities and, it's not difficult. It's not difficult and the right all. feeding mechanism right the, the, the veterinarian everybody plays a part so, so i think what's important trevor is that uh, and part of the video that you're, you're putting out is important but i think you need to look at the goat farmers association as a, as a knowledge center it is yes right so that the farmers new farmer old farmer can benefit from from the knowledge place there i think we, if we talk about a knowledge society, but what does it actually mean to be a knowledge society? It really means to, be able to provide access to knowledge, to, to provide the avenues for people to access knowledge, right? And to make knowledge value available so people can actually use it to innovate and drive, drive their own um, mandates and their own you know, local, domestic, right. uh, creative ideas. Yes. And what we do, we go around the place and we share everybody's ideas. We look at everybody's facility and we come up with our own way and we train people because we don't want people to be making mistakes. Yes. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want people, all of this good farming been doing from way, way back, we have learned so much and we want us the young farmers I mean, and young it, people to learn. Take it to our next level. Take it to our next yes. level. Yes. yes. And, and, and the critical thing, Trevor, is that getting young people to understand it's a business. It it's is. It's not a hobby. It's not a hobby. And, and you can earn a good living raising goats. You can. And you have to have the numbers. Yeah. That's why I set the margin, right. small farmers to be 200 and up. You have to have those numbers and you have to think big. Right. Think big. That's the only way. And, and again, Trevor, the, the numbers would, would, would differ depending on what you're doing. If you're, if you're into the breeding program, Yes. 100 goats would be good, be useful. I've seen people with 100 goats making a lot of money. Yes. But you're into breeding. Right. As you know, breeding is a much more costly. Cost, right. Costly. And what we're talking about animals. breeding, the word breeding mean if you're into purebred pure, stock. Right. Mean pure and, newbie and, and pure boar. providing breeding stock for And providing of the breeding stock. Okay, you, need, you need, so the, the, the industry has two layers. You, you, have, you have the persons who provide the breeding stock for the farmers. And then you have the farmers who produce the meat for the, for the market. And the milk. And the milk. Right. Yes. So it's important. And uh, we, we have not emphasized enough the milk part of the goat business. Yes. Right? And, and in fact, the, we think the milk part of the goat business could become a critical part of closing the gap in terms of the imports of milk versus what we produce in locally. And you are correct. I believe that we should be 50% of the milk products and milk that we're using in Jamaica should be goat and the other 50% can be cattle. I think the goat industry can step up to that plate. And we can do it very quickly because we have the numbers here to do it. Absolutely. And we have the genetics and we can import better genetics to do the job. Absolutely. Yes. All right. So our mandate, um, Doc, is to drive down. I like when you say it, you know, we want to drive down the import bill. So you just close by saying it. No, well, you have to. I mean, the, the fact is that I'm case. At the end of the day, I'm still part of the, part of the government. And, it, you know, and, and so we are going to run institution. So the, the policy of the government becomes the driving policies that affects how we do our, our jobs. And to be quite frank with you, we can't keep importing. 40 million US dollars could be spent, better spent doing many other things. Like fixing the roads. Than, <laughs> as opposed to in, buying, importing goat meat. That's right. And, and if you think about it, if you were to convert that 40 million US dollars into Jamaican dollars and pump that into the, the goat sector, that's a local economy. That's correct. So it's a, it's a complete boost to the local economy. Providing jobs. Absolutely. Providing better infrastructure. Yes. Guess what? People, the taxes. I'm always telling you, you know, that even when you're doing your goat farming, you need to register your business, business and, and pay, pay tax, tax pay the GCT, pay yeah. all of these things that are there because there are benefits from it. You can buy house, buy land, do all kinds of things when you're paying taxes. But those taxes are going to be used to fix the infrastructure Absolutely. of Jamaica, Absolutely. which is important. Absolutely. All right. So, you know, we are part of the Buy Jamaica campaign and we want all our young youths to be, you know, employed and have good jobs and earning money. And, Make I, Jamaica and, and better. we want the society to, try to be knowledgeable about this because a lot of people don't understand it, the importance of buying local. Yes. Right. So sometimes local costs a little bit more. But when you, when you buy a pound of tomatoes from a Jamaican farmer, what you're in fact doing is supporting the Jamaican economy. That's right. When you buy a, a, a pound of tomato paste, if you import, yes, yes, an importer may be making some money and it implies a few workers, but it doesn't have the same effect on the, the local economy. It's not as if you were to buy from that from correct. the local farmer. So we really have to find out and, and the way I the way I look at it, we have to look for the low hanging fruits. Yes. Goat rearing is one of them. 
you have looked very far. Go to Rain is one of them. Your pineapple, pineapple is, is, is another one. one. Okay. These are low-hanging fruits. <laughs> yes. Jamaicans have been growing pineapple for, for, for decades. Akis is another low-hanging fruit. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> you know? We just need to expand the production. We need to become more efficient in our product, product, production practices. And we need to focus on productivity. So, for example, I said to you earlier, 20,000 suckers per acre versus eight. You can do the math. Yes. The same amount of fertilizer, the same amount of food. Right? We were talking but two and a half times the productivity, one versus the other. We were talking about mango the other day. You are, you know the statistics. Mango yes. is another big winner. Yes, big yes. big winner. The demand is through the roof. We don't import fresh mangoes. We import a lot of mango puree. All the mango purees are pretty much imported. But mango, there's a massive export opportunity for mangoes. Jamaicans in the diaspora, Canada, UK, USA, cannot get enough mangoes. Yes, we're just not producing enough mangoes. So mango is something that again, if you harness, if you if you grow it properly, you control the fruit flies. So you know you have to, that is an issue you have to manage, right? You can, you can make earn significant money from from, yes, it? from small acreages because yeah. they are also modern scientific way of growing every crop, Absolutely. every crop. You and don't need the puree because I tell you, mango puree will sell. Will sell, yes. All right. A number of smaller farmers are, are smaller processors that don't don't necessarily have to import. If they get local, they buy it. Yes, that's definitely so. So it's really, we have to know, build, look at how we build the, the middle layer of the, of, the, of the agriculture sector. That agroprocessing sector is critical that we start to build that out. Right. And as usual, I'm going to close off here now. But one of the things I love about agroprocessing, as you know, I feed mango skins to my goats a lot. I go to the processing plant and I collect all different kind of waste, pineapple, whatever I can, and I use it to feed my goat. So one of the reasons I am here today, because I want to make people understand about agro-processing and what happens as it relates to the small ruminant sector. We're going to use the waste from all of these agricultural places and feed our goats. Thank you for watching. Please continue to subscribe to my channel and we will always have something more interesting. Thank Mr. Dr. Deslandis today for helping Thank us with much. this video. And you know, he's always has a wealth of statistics to give us. <laughs> he's a statistical genius. I don't think I, do, I just read a lot and I, I do a lot of work and you know I spent out like recently I was spending a lot looking at looking at imports from Jamaica into the UK and just looking at what are the possibilities okay, you know with Brexit what does that mean now out of Brexit is that the, the, the UK is now looking to us and other countries to supply so so Brexit kind of the, the EU brought in some regulations that were, were, were detrimental to our exports right with Brexit now the opportunity to, 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 to again ramp our exports back to the UK, I think, is very real, and we have to take advantage of that. Right. All right. So thanks again. Thank you. Continue to watching. We're going to go now.